Hi, in this video we're going to look at how to use integration to determine the area between two curves. Let's go. Okay, so we're going to start with this example. We want to find the area of the region between y equals x squared minus 2x and y equals x plus 4. You always want to start by looking at the graph for a few reasons. Uh, the first reason is we want to make sure that there is a region that's bounded by these curves. And looking at this graph, we can see that there is a region between these two curves uh, that I'm highlighting right here. So this is what we're going to attempt to find the area of. The second reason you want to look at the graph is because we need to determine which of these two functions makes the top boundary of my region and which of the two functions makes my lower boundary. So if we kind of take a, a slice from this region right here, we can see that the top of that slice is going to fall on the linear function. So this is going to be the top boundary. And we can also see that the bottom of this slice is going to lie on the quadratic. So that means this is the bottom boundary. So when I do my integral, I'm going to be integrating the top boundary minus the lower boundary. We always need to do top minus bottom. And sometimes it's not obvious which is which, so that's why it's important to look at the graph. The graph will show you which of the two functions makes the top boundary and which one makes the bottom. We always want to do top minus bottom. The next thing we need to do is decide where to start this integration and where to stop. And to do that, we need to identify the points of intersection. And based on my graph, it looks like we have the point 4, 8, and it looks like we have the point negative 1, 3. Now you do want to check this using algebra to make sure that these are the exact points of intersection and not just points that are really close to the exact points of intersection. So it's always a good habit to get into to check this using algebra. So to do that we just need to know when the graph of x squared minus 2x intersects the graph of x plus 4 and we can do this algebraically by setting these two expressions equal to each other. If I subtract x from both sides, that will give me minus 3x. If I subtract 4, that will give me minus 4. I can factor this. It's going to be x minus 4, x plus 1. So from this, we can see that the exact points of intersection are x plus 4 and x equals negative 1. So when we integrate, we always integrate from left to right. So I'm going to integrate from negative 1 to 4. And if I calculate this integral, it should give me the area of this region. So let's simplify this. If I combine like terms, I'm going to have negative x squared uh, plus 3x plus 4. And then I'm going to find the antiderivative, which would be negative 1 third x cubed plus 3 halves x squared plus 4x. And we're going to evaluate this antiderivative from x equals negative 1 to x equals 4. Okay. So if I evaluate at 4, we're going to have 1 third 4 cubed plus 3 halves 4 squared plus 4 times 4. And if I substitute negative 1, I'm going to have negative 1 third times negative 1 cubed plus 3 halves negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 4. Okay, so in the first parenthesis, I'm going to have negative 64 thirds plus 48 halves plus 16. And in the second parenthesis, I'm going to have positive 1 third plus 3 halves minus 4. Simplify the first parenthesis, I get 56 thirds. And in the second parenthesis, we get negative 13 over 6, and if I combine those together, I end up with 112 over 6 plus 13 over 6, which is 125 over 6. So the area of the shaded region is 125 over 6, which is around almost 21, but not quite. So the area is around 21. 21 units, square units. 21 square units, approximately. Okay, so again, we want to integrate top, the top boundary minus the bottom boundary, and we need to find the points of intersection 
to determine where to start and stop our integration. Now let's look at a second example that's a little bit different. We want to find the area of the region between the curves y squared equals x and y equals negative 2x plus 1. And again, we're going to start by looking at the graph to make sure that there is a region here. And there is. So I do have this region bounded by the two curves that I'm highlighting right here. And we need to determine uh, which function is the top boundary and which function is the bottom boundary. This one is a little bit different because if I slice this vertically like I did the last time, if I choose a slice over here, it looks like the top and bottom are both on the red curve, which is kind of weird. But if I move over here, the top is on the line and the bottom is on the curve. So I don't have a consistent uh, top and bottom boundary for this region like I did in the previous example. Okay, so we could do it the normal way, but we would need two integrals in order to do this. Because for part of the region, the top and bottom come from the red curve. And for another part of the region, the top and bottom come from the line and the curve respectively. So I wouldn't be able to do this in one integral. Before I were to go down that road, I might want to determine if there's a better way. So let's consider instead slicing this region up horizontally instead of vertically. Notice if I do it this way, no matter where I slice it up, the left boundary of my region is going to fall on the, the curve, and the right boundary of my region is going to fall uh, on the line. So this is my left boundary, and this is my right boundary. Okay. So instead of integrating top minus bottom, in this case, it might make more sense to integrate right minus left. And the reason I do right minus left instead of left minus right, if you look at this region and turn your head 90 degrees to the right, uh, you'll see that the line makes up the top boundary and the curve makes the bo bottom boundary. So I'm going to do the right minus the left. Now we get a little bit stuck here because the curve that's on the left, I don't have it written in function form. Unless I solve for x, instead of y. So that's what we're actually going to do here. Anytime we integrate from left to right instead of from bottom to top, anytime we integrate from left to right instead of from bottom to top, we want to solve both of these equations for x and express them in terms of functions of y. So my left boundary, this quadratic, is already written as a function of y. I need to do the same thing over here. So to do that, I would need to subtract 1 from both sides and then divide by negative 2. So what I end up with is negative 1 half y plus 1 half. So that's how I would express the line as a function of y instead of a function of x. Now as I've already described, we want to integrate this time from right minus left instead of top minus bottom. So on the right I have the line which I've just written as a function of y and on the left I'm going to have the parabola which is also written as a function of y. And now because I have a function of y in the integrand I'm not integrating with respect to x, I'm now integrating with respect to y. And that's important because that tells me that my limits of integration should be y coordinates this time instead of x coordinates. So my next step is to find these the coordinates of the points of intersection. Okay, And again, an easy way I can do that is to set my two functions in terms of y equal to each other and see if we can find solutions. Okay, uh, We might make this simpler by multiplying every term by 2. And then I'll move all three terms to the right-hand side of this equation, and that will give me this quadratic equation. This equation can be factored. It's 2y minus 1 times y plus 1. So the y-coordinates of my points of intersection are y equals 1 half and y equals negative 1. And y-coordinates are exactly what I want because I'm integrating with respect to y. 
So I'm going to integrate from negative 1 to 1 half. So now I'm going to simplify this. If I combine all the like terms, I get negative y squared minus 1 half y plus 1 half dy. Then I'm going to find my antiderivative, which is negative 1 third y cubed minus 1 fourth y squared plus 1 half y. And I am going to evaluate from y equals negative 1 to y equals 1 half. If I evaluate at 1 half, I get negative 1 third times 1 half cubed minus 1 fourth times 1 half squared plus 1 half times 1 half. And if I plug in negative 1, I get negative 1 third negative 1 cubed minus 1 fourth negative 1 squared plus 1 half negative 1. If I simplify the first parenthesis, I get negative 1 24th plus, nope, minus 1 16th plus 1 4th. And if I simplify the second parenthesis, I get positive 1 3rd minus 1 4th minus 1 half. And then if I simplify the first parenthesis again, I get 7 48 And then in the second parenthesis, I have negative 5 twelfths. So that's 7 48 plus 20 48 So my area is 27 48 Okay, so the area between the two curves uh, found using integration with respect to y is 27 48. So sometimes uh, slicing it up horizontally makes more sense than slicing it up vertically. I hope you found these two examples helpful.